project is called an algorithm for serendipity and it's an inquiry of online dating. So what it's about is basically looking at how OkCupid really is trying to replace serendipity with an algorithm and whether or not this works for so many users who are doing it. Video games like online dating, we do those recreationally but they're not talked about in the classroom. And what's great about digital humanities is it's a way to bring together these two very critically important things and to examine the rhetoric that comes out of it. What are the, the social implications? How are we affected by it in our day-to-day -day lives? In a world that is increasingly reliant on something that's digital, right? So this is our chance to kind of look at it as, as people who have grown up in that generation and present our research on it to create and to play around with it. This is a digital edition of the Amy Matilda Cassie album. So we're working towards digitizing all the different networks that are present in the album. I think one thing that the undergraduate research in the humanities um, has sort of helped me to appreciate sort of the significance of those extra sources we read. You know, now that I'm actually dealing with primary sources that need clarification on who the author is or on whether or not, you know, John Chu knew Frederick Douglass, right? When I find a source or a secondary source that references that or says something, I'm like, yes! Basically this project is a distant reading uh, from a post-colonial perspective of texts that deal with the relationship between Britain and India. So Victorian novels. Doing DH work is really important in terms of world literature and power in that sense because you have the canon and then you have world literature. And we haven't really read world literature in the same way. And so I think that using the digital humanities as a starting point is a really useful tool. If you're you know, an undergraduate and you're involved in digital humanities, you can kind of learn how not just research and not just information, but how to access that information. Well, the wonderful thing about my major as a liberal arts major and a European studies major, I've been able to still take classes in math. I've been able to do independent studies and sort of interdisciplinary fields. And I'm looking forward to my PhD being something super niche and super, super specific. That's how academia sort of works. But undergrad is really the time to develop a lot of knowledge about a lot of different fields. So there's a comfort with technology, but also would get you to think about things in a different way, other than just like, oh, I know how to write you know, an eight-page paper to get an A in this class, so let me just go do that. And it's also really time-intensive, which forces you to take a lot more care with the work. You can't just, like, rush and, you know, pull an all-nighter and make a digital archive.